Right, so I left you with an introduction to pseudocode and I was just priming you for trace tables. Trace tables being where we manually test our algorithms. And we've got this algorithm here that does not work. We know it doesn't work. We've spotted what the errors are. And we've got this version of the algorithm that we hope works. And we're going to demonstrate using a trace table how we can spot these errors. So I've said here, generate a trace table for the inputs 3, 75, 42, minus 5. Now in generating your test data for a trace table, you should generally make sure you continue, uh, test for edge cases and your extreme cases and your boundary cases. So make sure you do that. This I haven't done that here, so this really should have a zero and uh, um, 100 and 101 and 99 on it, you know, just to be testing the boundaries. Uh, but for now, let's just carry on. How do we set up a trace table? Yeah, firstly, we try and do it nice and neat, so I'm going to get myself out a ruler. And I'm going to do a trace table for both versions of this algorithm. And you rule up a column for each variable. So what have we got? We've got count, total, n, average, and outputs, uh, and inputs. <laughs> All right, so count, total, n, uh, average, and output. Probably should do input. Um, I don't really think it's always necessary. It's the variables that count matter the most and output. Output is generally going to be looked for in your exam marking keys. Um, I don't think I've actually seen them ask for input. So, you know. But hey, no one ever accused the IB or the IGCSE of being consistent. I uh, will just quickly rule up the same here. Count, total, n, average, and output. There's my little blue tack telling me where the edge of the screen is. All right. So how do we use a trace table? Uh, we are basically manually doing the job of the computer and we go through our algorithm line by line until the algorithm finishes. Uh, so it can be a little tedious, but it is a fail safe to test algorithms. So let's start with the one that doesn't work. Generate a trace table for the inputs 3, 75, 42, negative 5, 0. So, the first thing, I might quickly come up here and number my lines. All right, and so I'm gonna start in line one. What's the first thing that happens? Count gets set to the value of zero. Line two, total is getting set to the value of zero. Now, basically the idea is anytime I'm then using a variable lookup, I can just, so if I'm down here, I can see, oh, last time I set a value for county, it was one, or it was zero. So you can look up your variables that way. So here, line three, input n. So the first number being inputted is three, that's going into n, so three can go into n. Number four, while n is bigger than zero and less than 100, is that the case? Yes, so we are going to move forward into line five. Put, take n, put it into total, so 3 goes into total, so far that all looks good. Line 6, 1 goes into count, okay, and while, so let's see, do we look again, while n is between, is greater than 0 and n is less than 100, yes it is. Total, whatever is in n goes into total, 3. All right, so here this was line five. Line six, one goes into count. And pretty quickly we will have realized that we had made a mistake. Let's see what happens, All right, because we're never gonna change. N is never changing. We're never gonna exit this while loop. Let's look at the corrected version, or that we hope is a corrected version. 
All right, line one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And I'll just quickly write up the top here that my inputs will be three seventy five forty two minus five and zero. Will we get to that zero? So line one count is getting set to zero. Line two, total is being set to zero. Line three, input n. So the first one is a three, so I'm going to put a three in here and then cross it off so I know that I've done it. Line four, while n is bigger than zero and less than 100, yes it is. So line five, total is equal to total plus n. All right, so what's currently in total is a zero. What's currently in N is 3, so this is now a 0. Count is equal to count plus 1, so what's currently in count is a 0. Plus 1, that is now going to be set to a 1. All right. You don't need to write this calculation in there, uh, but it, if you are nervous or worried about it, by all means do so, better safe than sorry. And I will, again, the line numbers are not compulsory either, but they can be quite helpful, especially while you're learning it or you're in, nervous in an exam to make sure you are at the right place. So after line six, the next line, let's look at line seven. We are inputting a number for N. The next number for N, my next input, sorry, will be 75. So let's put in here number 75 and then cross that out. All right, end while. So let's see, Do have we finished the while loop? So back up to number four. N bigger than zero and less than 100. Yes, it is. And so I'm gonna continue in this loop. Total is equal to total plus N. Oops, and I didn't, did you spot this error here? Zero plus three, that should be a three. This is where having your calculations in here, doesn't always necessarily mean you get your arithmetic right, especially when you're doing it in the pressure of trying to record a video. So 75 plus 3, 75 plus 3 is equal to 78. Count is equal to count plus 1, so 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. You're probably screaming at me for the last 5 minutes. That's not 0. Okay, input N. Um, okay, and notice also here, I've just put line 5 and line 6 on the same line. Because they don't interfere with each other, you can actually generally get away with that, all right? Um, but while you're learning, probably best to try and do one calculation per line, okay? Uh, but you won't get marked down for that, provided they don't interfere with each other. Line seven, let's input the new number for N is 42. All right, then we're back up here is N, Bigger than zero, yes, and n is less than 100, yes. All right, so we are moving back into line five. Total is 78. All right, that's what's currently inside total. Plus this n number, which is 42. All right, so the two makes that 80 plus the 40, 120. I hope that's right, yeah. Uh, count increases by one, so two plus one is equal to three. That was line six. Line seven, we input the next n minus five. Okay, let's come back up to line four. While n is bigger than zero, well, n is not bigger than zero, so we have finished our loop. We come down to line nine. Average is equal to total divided by count. So we have 120 divided by three, gee, I did these numbers nicely, didn't I? That was a fluke, uh, is equal to 40. So then line 10, our output will be 40. And we are done. All right, so that is what a trace table is. You can use trace tables to try to spot errors to correct your algorithms or to verify that your algorithm is correct, you will need to be able to generate trace tables in your course. All right, this is Mr. Baumgarten signing off.